Welcome back to Fast Market here on the Schwab Network. It's time for our cash tag segment. For that, let's bring in Andy Swan. He's a co-founder at Likefolio. Welcome back to the show, Andy. Hey, happy Monday. Happy Monday to you, too. And happy Monday for all the Affirm investors uh, over the past 12 months because the stock's up 345%. I mean, are you guys seeing the data that supports it? I know this stock gets kind of lumped in, something that's not making money yet. It, there's short interest built up in it. Maybe that's part of the reason that you're seeing the rally. But, uh, you know, the consumers remaining resilient. Are you seeing data on a firm that, uh, you know, kind of supports this thesis in this move? Yeah, the, the consumer remains resilient. And I think also the consumer is changing the way that they shop online, at least a segment of the population. Um, you know, a firm essentially loans money to uh, customers who are buying online so that they can pay their um, the, for their purchases over time, buy now, pay later. I think the big deal for a firm and the reason um, that Wall Street's starting to like it, a reason that uh, we are you know, somewhat reluctantly starting to really like it is um, the exclusive deal that they have with Shopify. And, and we see Shopify as a major, major trendsetter. It is a, a, a tide that rises all boats. Uh, Shopify is doing a fantastic job of kind of taking over the internet from a direct-to-consumer perspective. They're taking everything that Amazon pretty much is not. And so Shopify... Uh, as an exclusive, you know, a firm as an exclusive partner for Shopify is benefiting in a very, very big way from that because that they are the provider of buy now, pay later services uh, for Shopify. And so, from an overall perspective, like Folio perspective, you know, it's kind of a what's not to like about this. Web visits to a firm are up on a year over year basis. Uh, the Shopify, uh, you know, tailwind is enormous, and we think that continues to bolster. Uh, what a firm uh, offers. And then the other thing that we're seeing is just, uh, you know, when we kind of dig down into some of these social media mentions about a firm, you know, we're starting to see some indication that customers actually prefer this method of payment to paying with a credit card. It's not always uh, my credit card is maxed out, so I have to use buy now, pay later. A lot of people simply prefer this because the payments are scheduled and structured in a way uh, that they understand and can plan for. And so I think there is a little bit of, uh, of that, um, you know, consumer adoption angle that I think uh, skeptics tend to gloss over or miss completely. So, uh, you know, overall, we think a firm is in a risky, very risky category, but in one that is paying off for as long as the consumer and uh, the online uh, providers like Shopify can stay strong. Uh, Andy, can you elaborate a little bit on that uh, kind of risky element? I think what you're alluding to is uh, the experience between one to another is relatively similar, uh, as well as uh, if that were to break down, let's say that exclusive partnership with Shopify, uh, there's really no major difference to the consumer. They just like buy now, pay later. Uh, barriers to entry might be a little bit, uh, let's call it easy to overcome uh, for many yeah. of these companies. Is that kind of what you're getting at? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That is a, a huge factor. You know, it's really um, difficult to see that there's any significant customer consumer loyalty to a firm itself. It's, you know, really reliant on the partnerships that it's establishing, but it is a market leader. And, and a lot of times uh, that can get you the market share you need and, and become very defensible. The other thing about it is, you know, a, a firm is uh, loaning money to people uh, that otherwise, you know, a lot of times can't get loans. Um, and, and that's, you know, in, in and of itself a risky proposition. Uh, I'm not sure how their uh, debt offloading structure works, but, you know, a lot of times they are the lender of last resort. And so uh, that just by, by its nature is, is a risky business to be in. But uh, so far, so good. Uh, we think Wall Street overreacted to the upside, you know, 2020 and 2021 probably overreacted to the downside. And now we're kind of figuring out where a firm should be. Andy, you know, I kind of wanted to, you know, dive into this a little bit from the perspective that, hey, uh, you know, unemployment rates at 3.7 percent, uh, you know, wages have been growing. So it seems like this it works out pretty well. Right. The, uh, the write off last quarter. Um, delinquency rates were uh, just above 2%, which kind of counters that notion that it's like a house of cards built on, yeah. you know, micro loans and this stuff. But is this maybe one of those uh, companies that might be susceptible 
that, hey, if the economy turns or there's more layoffs, uh, credit card debt's already at record levels for people. Is that the caveat that might, uh, you know, crack the back on this massive rally that we've seen? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, it, it's one of those plays where if you're bullish on Shopify and you're bullish on the overall online direct-to-consumer customer, then a firm is a fantastic place to be because they've proven the model when things are good. Uh, what they haven't proven is the model when things turn bad. And all of those things that you're talking about, uh, you know, are real risks. And I think, you know, that is uh, a competitor stepping in, uh, you know, Shopify or someone like that building their own their own version of this, a bank stepping in to partner with, uh, with Shopify or these others. And then also, of course, you know, if the consumer weakens or if the consumer, uh, you know, has taken on too much debt and this is the this is the last loan they're going to pay back, you know, in a lot of circumstances, uh, then a firm becomes really wobbly. And so I, I think you have to weigh both of those together. Uh, you know, the short sellers are building on one side and the buyers are building on the other. So it's a classic, you know, we'll find out uh, probably in 2024. But for now, uh, a firm riding some really nice waves. Yeah, it'll be interesting to test that kind of credit risk uh, element yeah. of this if we get a chance uh, over the next uh couple of years or if we're lucky maybe uh, there is no uh, type of hard landings yep. or anything and there won't be any test and that'll be a, a conversation for another day but I do want to pick your brain kind of long term what companies like a firm what companies like Shopify maybe you throw a block uh, formerly known as Square or PayPal in there as well what are these companies and others I'm sure I forgot what is this doing to the traditional kind of credit card networking element that we've had in place for decades is there a risk there down the line, you know, decades down the line maybe, to the visas, the MasterCards of the world that have kind of had a stranglehold uh, on this kind of commerce uh, outside of the cash element uh, for what seems like uh, as long as I can remember? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think there is, you know, um, most of our data on this is, um, you know, fairly loose. It's kind of subjectively analyzed in terms of uh, our research team's human eyes on it. But there definitely is a little bit of a, uh, a building preference for this type of uh, loan or purchasing process over the typical credit card process. It is, I know what my payments are going to be, I make those payments and I'm good. Uh, whereas sometimes the credit card can just build up on you to a point you didn't realize what the payment was going to be. It grows and you, and you find yourself uh, in some trouble if you're not paying a, a whole lot of attention. And so I actually think uh, one of the more bullish uh, theses for a firm is that it could be an acquisition target for one of those uh, traditional credit card companies who want to get into the space and protect uh, the moat that they do have. And so I think that's that's kind of that outside flyer opportunity, uh, you know, on the bullish side of a firm is that they're disrupting enough to actually be something that uh, one of these larger companies has to own. Yeah, just like Afterpay was, uh, you know, scooped up uh, also. Maybe they, they paid a little bit too much for that. But, yeah, definitely, uh, you know, that M&A activity could possibly come into play here. And you got MasterCard and Visa that just hit all-time highs last week, too. Yeah. So consumer is doing well. All right, thanks, uh, thanks, Andy. Appreciate it. All right, thank you, guys. That's Andy Swan, co-founder at Likefolio, breaking down the data for us. So, Alex, this stock rolled over last 